Hi guys, if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. And if you're new to the channel, please don't forget to subscribe. What you see in the vise then is a heavy buzzer. So without further ado, let's get into it. In the vise then is a Hanak H310 barbless hook. This one's at size 12, it's on a heavy wire and it's in black nickel. And I've coupled that with a 2.7 Hanak competition tungsten bead. Now, the other week there, if you follow the channel, you know I fished with Steve Cullen and he was fishing with a size 8 heavy grub hook, which was quite a big fly. Now, I want to achieve the same weight and sink rate but with a much smaller fly, the size 12. So I'm using the tungsten bead to give me that extra weight. The thread I'm going to be using today is from UTC. It's in black and it's a 140 denier thread. So nice and thick. First thing I'm going to do then is catch on in behind the bead and just build a little bump to stop it moving around. And then I can come all the way down using my rat's tail as a guide. Not being overly fussy with the turns at the moment, but touching turns is good for this fly. And I'll bring that all the way to round round the bend. Down round the bend, not round round the bend. And then just remove my rat's tail. Next then, I'm going to add in my rib. And I'm using some of the hand stripped Polish quills. This, this is the natural. I've found that these are the the, uh, the best quills for, for doing these types of buzzers. Uh, they've just got lovely definition to them. And what I'm going to do initially is just take off that waste piece and then I'll just catch that in at the bottom there. Then carefully bring my thread back up. Now while I had my thread parked and I was getting my quill ready you'll notice that the UTC has naturally unspun itself. Now if you're in a hurry all you need to do is turn this anti-clockwise and it'll do the same. So you get a nice flat thread to build your body. A few turns at the top there Next then, I'm going to come in with my hackle pliers, simply grab my rib and a helpful tip is if you've got the function to turn your vise slightly, you get to see your hook point here because you don't want to catch your um, quill rib with the hook point. So if you just can tilt that slightly initially to get you started, it can save you a world of hurt. Of course, if you've got a rotary vise like this, you can just hold the quill and turn the vise. But I've had a few guys saying, well, I just don't have that inline rotary function. So I'm just going to do it how I used to do it, the good old fashioned way before I got the new talent. But it works just the same. Now, once I've got to a certain point, I can just move my vise back into the right position and hopefully the flies come back into focus for you there and then whoops nearly lost my way there got away with it though and I can bring my rib all the way up and finish it just when it meets my thread now I probably could have got away with that with my fingers but best to be safe and then I can come in and take my rib away. Okay, so far so good. Next, I'm going to add uh, my thorax cover and I'm using some Opal Mirage tinsel. This one's uh, in medium and it's just to add a little bit of bling to the fly. So I'm gonna catch that in. Now I'm catching it in slightly on top on my side. Now when I turn my thread over the shank, that brings my thorax cover 
on top of the shank. I don't know if you can see there. So it's directly on top of the shank. So just start it slightly on your side and as you turn your thread it brings it over to the shank. Next then I'm going to add in my cheeks and what I'm using is some flow orange vinyl cheeks. These ones are from uh, the fishing den. Uh, great things, really bright, easy to use. So I've got a strip off here. It's uh, in 0 0.8 millimetres thick if you're technical and interested in that sort of thing. So I'll catch it in on my side initially and then I'll just take enough as to bring it round and then I'll catch it in on your side. Now the tying of this fly is fairly straightforward, you know if you take your time it's easy enough to tie but to get a really nice finish with it it's the varnishing, that's always the key to these fast sinking buzzers. If you get the varnishing right, they look superb. So I don't want to have a huge big thick thorax and I certainly don't want it any bigger than my bead here. So I've done, I've caught that in. I'm going to bring my cheek on my side round first. Then I can bring your cheek to follow. Now they are sticky back laminate. I'll just get a couple of turns of thread to hold that into place. Then I can come in and as tight as you can get into that, hold it into place. And I'm just going to turn my vice so I get this right. On your side, I'm going to get it nice and tight. And that's not too bad. Now, I've got a bit left and that'll do the next one. So I'll just put that to the side. Tilt my vice back the correct way and then this time we're going to bring our thorax cover over the top. This is going to give us that little glint of light as we're fishing the fly. A couple of turns in to hold it and then I can take that away. So far so good, it's not fallen to pieces on me yet. Now what I want to do is ensure that I cover up my tail end and I've almost done it on your side, maybe one more turn will do it. And then I can come in with my whip finish tool. Oh, he says, still um, the devil's tool to my mind. Three turn whip finish and the job's a good one. Um, something that you might not have noticed when I started initially, I should have mentioned it really, is that I didn't add any wax to my thread because the thread's forming your body and you don't want that to um, impact on the fly. So last but not least we're going to start the vanishing process. Now what I usually do, I'll explain what I do, I'm not going to do it because it does take a long time. So I'll tie up several of these to this point and then what I do is every one of them gets a coat of super glue and sent off to the side to dry and I leave them for a couple of hours or whatnot. So we'll imagine I've super glued this fly, I'm not going to do this one because what I do then is I add several um, layers of UV resin and I'm using the Solaris I'm just going to do one layer on this occasion. So make sure you get plenty of it on. I do like resins. I know a lot of people aren't a fan. They like to use the old uh, Sally Hansen, but I've found the Solaris pretty good. It's uh, it, it does fly to a standard I'm quite happy with, so. I've just got a new bottle actually, as mine was getting a little bit low. And when it comes into the UK, it doesn't last long. People are all over it. So, I've got that layered up. And I'll come in with my UV torch and just give it a blast. Now, I would do several layers of UV resin 
and then eventually I would get to the point where I'm happy or if not I would give it then a coat of Sally Hansen just to be on the safe side to finish off the fly. So this is one I'm going to come back to later and what you end up with in the vise of course is a nice shiny but extremely heavy and small buzzer and that's it there and uh, as I said watching Steve fishing the uh, the size 8 grub hook and I have got them sort of flies but they're big and uh, I just think that this will get down as quick and be a much more takeable fly when the buzzers are getting a little bit smaller. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you got something out of that and it's given you some ideas. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please think about clicking the button in the corner there. I would really appreciate your support.